Hello, this is Derek from One Rare Tea. Today we're going to look at how to make smoke flower red tea. It's a new varietal of red tea made from an old varietal of green tea. This is in Jiangsu province in the small city of Yijong, and this is my tea master Ying. He's going to walk us through his methodology of making this red tea, from picking to withering, and hopefully all the way to oxidization. Let's check it out. Here we are in the fields. Obviously, this is the most important place for tea. This is where tea starts. What the pickers do here, what the farmers do here, has some of the most profound effects on what's actually in the cup. It's all about what material the producers have to work with. The producers are obviously the ones that give the tea the final shape, but the farmers and the pickers, they're the ones responsible for the bulk of the job. So red red bean red bean soup. The refreshment out here <laughs> in the field. <laughs> this is our tea master's plot here. The varietal specifically for red tea grown in this area. This region's never produced red tea, really. And so this is kind of the first attempt to it. Or is it the So just the gathering of spring tea leaf cooperative. I saw ladies picking it earlier today. It's early May. The temperature is really hot, maybe like 30 degrees Celsius. Um, the red tea is usually picked in the temperatures after the green tea harvest is done. But hopefully we'll see the processing later today. This is an interesting insight into the way the cooperative works. As you can see here, two pickers have come in and they're weighing their tea that they've picked through the morning. The man sitting behind the counter is the cooperative's main producer, and he's in charge of keeping track of the names of these people and how much tea they've brought in. That way they can be reimbursed at a later date. This is perhaps one of the most important aspects of making red tea. This is the withering process, the wei diao. And this is when you're letting all of the water in the tea evaporate, the moisture content goes down maybe to something under 10% before you can start really rolling it and working it with it as tea. Uh, red tea is so important because this is also the pre-oxidization phase. This is when you're slightly moving the tea around and it is slightly oxidizing. Uh, but you'll see later it'll pass through an actual oxidization machine which will really take it from 70% all the way to 100% oxidization. Uh, but this process is one of the most labor-intensive aspects of making red tea because it lasts all day. And you can see the tea workers just constantly, constantly rearranging the tea. So here we are at the withering phase. The tea has just been picked, it's just around noon. Uh, the tea will be withered for the rest of the afternoon and then in the evening we'll begin to turn it into red tea. And this is the smoke and flower red, the Yan Hua Hong. It's the first of its kind done in the city, in Yongzhou. Um, this is my tea master uh, who's kind of commissioned this plot of land and has been overseeing it for the past couple of months. So he's very excited. This is the first year we're doing the true red tea, Yangzhou red tea. And so it should be interesting to see the process from start to finish. During the withering phase, he said that if the tea is piled too thick, uh, it will develop a sour flavor. And so he's going through and making sure that everything is still able to breathe during this withering phase and there aren't any pockets of anaerobic oxidization or fermentation going on.
I was fortunate enough to be allowed to help during this phase. As you can see, the methodology is very simple. What we're doing is we're turning the tea. We're taking the tea that has been on the bottom and we're putting it on the top. This is because the tea that's been on the bottom might oxidize at a different speed than the tea that is on the top. The tea that's been on the bottom has less access to oxygen, and so in this slightly anaerobic environment, all flavors can emerge. So what we're doing here is we're moving all the tea around to give every leaf an equal opportunity to oxidize. The methodology I'm using here is what they call in Chinese the claw hand method. As you can see, I'm trying very hard not to grab the tea too tightly because that would cause the tea to bruise more and oxidize at a quicker rate. And so what I'm doing is I'm being very gentle with the tea and trying to air it all out. The pile right now is very loose. There's not a lot of density to the leaves. So what I'm just going through is making sure there's enough breathing room for all of the tea leaves. So when the aroma peaks, the aroma is flowered and it's properly withered. Then we'll bring it over here to the dun 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 rolling machine. Uh, keep in mind this is before it's been killed the green. Rolling, the rolling, rolling machine. Then, 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 Ah. Then we'll kind of dry it out. These little, these little pans. You can see there's wire mesh. Beautiful, beautiful filter. Oh, fa jia ji. So this is the oxidization machine. Fascinating. Huh. Just you show machine, you machine quang, show machine quang. Ah, high temperature. Okay. So it's just a kind of like a baking box. So just a ji ma. It's kind of like, oh. Okay, so it just separates it. Gong, oh. Hong gan. Okay, so this is the baking machine. Hong cha, the baking machine. So this totally dries it out. Rahona? Okay. Okay, we are sha ching. Okay. Interesting. So the Hong Chao, the or the Hong Cha, the red tea, the kill green phase doesn't occur. It's a uh, wei wei diao, so sun or withered for a while, then pass through the nian nian ji, uh, rolian rolian ji. So then then is rolled and fully oxidized. Then hou fang zai tai liang, place there. Then the fa jiao ji. The the for oxidization machine. And then finally in the Ganzao. Hong Ganzao? Hong Ganji. And then finally baked dry. Interesting. So right now we're still waiting for a lot of the tea to wither down. It's gonna lose some of the moisture content. And then once it loses the moisture content, it'll become more pliable. Uh, because one of the things is we'll pass it through the rolling machine. And we need it really, really pliable because right now, if you bend the stems, it breaks. And so now if you put it through the rolling machine, it'll just shred the bits. So you have to wait another couple hours before it's soft enough and pliable enough to work with. This rather iconic method of producing tea is called Yao Qing. This is the shake wilting. And this is a very gentle way to encourage a uniform oxidization in the tea leaves because the tea leaves are all being lightly bruised in this process, and all we're doing is we're accelerating the natural withering phase. Later phase of the uh, withering process for red tea. And as you can see, a lot of the tea, which used to take up four entire beds, has been condensed down. A lot of the size and weight has been lost due to moisture evaporating, coming out of the leaves. Also at this phase, we're growing a little thicker because we're trying to speed up that process of kind of like cooking. Uh, because right now, if you smell the leaves, it's really, really fragrant. And what you want to do is you want to wait until like it, the fragrance peaks, and then you'll roll it, then you'll oxidize it. But one thing to consider when you're looking at teas that are oxidized in a kind of an inconsistent way is you have to consider the moisture content, the amount of sunlight they're getting versus the amount of shade, the, the depth of the pile. 
stuff like that. I mean, there's so many different things. Like that pile is smaller than these piles. Maybe this pile will ferment faster than the smaller pile because it's larger. So many things going into this processing bread tea. It's very, very fascinating. This is the tragic moment in the evening that we realize even after an entire day of withering, the tea is still not ready to be passed through the rolling machine. Uh, the local producer suggests probably not until 2, 3 a.m. Uh, will the tea be ready to be made. As all business is done in China, the end of the day ends with a meal, with drinking, and with everyone solidifying their ties to each other and working together in this endeavor, even if the tea won't be made until 2 a.m. Thank you for watching. Sorry we couldn't get to the actual oxidization of the tea and the final stages of the red tea production, which all happened in the middle of the night. But I do hope that you learned a little bit about the process behind making red tea, and that the next time you're sipping on something during a session, you can really consider how much work goes into every cup. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys later.